<laughs> Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. And we're doing um, the fourth part of our series on the Trinity. And we finished off um, praise and we give you the glory and the honor we thank you for this day and father we pray as we look at your word now that you would bless us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen so we're looking at Charles Hodge on the doctrine of the Trinity and um, I'm going to do uh, two or three pages and uh, there's going to be uh, in the next video more um, more scripture okay Hodge says, the object for the council was called together, this is the council of Nicaea, called together was threefold, to remedy the confusion which prevailed in the use of several important words employed in discussions on the doctrine of the Trinity, to condemn errors which had been adopted in different parts of the church, to frame such statements of the doctrine as would include all its scriptural elements and satisfy the religious convictions of the mass of believers. This was an exceeding... often taken in its etymological sense for substance and is used by the council itself as anonymous uh, with another Greek word I can't read but it has already begun to be used in the sense of person as it expresses reality as opposed to what is phenomenal or apparent or mode of manifestation it came to be universally used in the Greek church in the let, late, later sense as a safeguard against the idea of a mere modal trinity it will be admitted that great confusion must prevail if one man would say there is only one in the Godhead and another affirm that there are three when both meant the same thing, the one used in the word in the sense of substance and the other in that of a person. In the Latin church the same difficulty was experienced in the use of the word of substantia and substantia. These words were often interchanged as equivalent and both were used sometimes in the sense of substance and so. finally determined the former uh, to mean substance or essence and the later a mode in which substance exists uh, subsistium according to established usage therefore is one substance and there are three substances in the Godhead to express the idea of subsistium intelligence or self-conscious agent the Greeks first used the word it's another Greek word but as that word properly means the face the aspect and as it was used by the Sabellians to express their doctrine of the threefold aspect under which the Godhead was revealed it was rejected and the word another word adopted the Latin word persona or from per and sono properly means a mass worn by an actor and through which he spoke and then the role or character which the actor sustained at this account the word had a struggle before it was adopted in the term It expressed plainly enough sameness of substance, but whether that sameness was specific or numerical, the usage of the word left undecided. Porphyry is quoted as saying that the souls of men and the irrational animals um, I think it's all su sumoi or something, and Aristotle is saying that the star stars are osuvioi. I mean and brutes are said to be all uvioi as to their bodies and is like a man of angels, demons and human souls are said to be all can't pronounce it Greek word. In this sense Peter, James and John as having the same nature in kind. On this account the use of the word was objected to 
as admitting the tritheistic interpretation. The council, however, determined the sun which it was to be understood in the decision by saying that the sun was begotten and by denying that he was created. As a god is a spirit and we are spirits, we are said in scripture to be like him and to be his children, to be of the same nature. But with regard to the son, it was declared that he was of the same numerical essence with the father. He is truly God, possessing the same attributes and entitled to the same homage. This explained the word became an in, insuperable barrier against the adoption of the Nineteen Creed by and who denied the true divinity of the Son of God. A second difficulty with which the Council had to contend was diversity of opinion on its of its own members. All the conflicting views which had agitated the Church were there represented. The principal party were the Arians who held that the Son owed his existence. that his preeminence consisted in the fact that he alone created immediately by God, whereas all other creatures were created by the Son. He was not God of himself, but was made God. That is an account of his exalted nature, and the relation in which he stands to all the creatures. As creator and governor, he was entitled to divine worship. So this is critiquing, he's critiquing um, the Iranians here, that they're heretical. One of the passages of which on which the Iranians principally relied was Proverbs 8.22, which in the Septuagint is rendered, he created me in the beginning of his ways. As wisdom there spoken of was universally understood to be the locus, and the Septuagint was regarded as authoritative. This passage seemed to prove beyond dispute that the Logos of Son was created. The Orthodox were forced to explain away this passage by saying that it was to be taken in the sense but to possess. The Vulgate therefore correctly renders the passage Dominus possidus me, and the English version also reads the Lord possess me. The Iranians probably constituted a small minority of the council. The semi-Iranians. The second party included the semi-Iranians and the disciples of origin. These held with the Iranians that the son owed his existence to the will of the father, that he was not of the same essence, they seem to hold that there was an essence intermediate between the divine substance and created substance. It was in reference to this form of opinion that Augustine oft afterwards said, uh, it's in Latin, the Son was therefore subordinate to the Father, not merely in rank. So uh, he gives a quote of, of um, Augustine in Latin, undo liquido apparent ispersum factum non es per quem facta Creature est et creature non des est. This is um, a quotation of Augustine in Latin. A quotation of Augustine in Latin. The semi Iranians also believed the Son was therefore subordinate to the Father, not merely in rank or mode of substance, but in nature. He belonged to a different order of beings. Uh, he was simply, according to origin, could be properly applied to the higher orders of intelligent creatures. The Son, although thus inferior to the Father, having life in himself, was the source of life, the Creator. The Holy Spirit, according to most of the Iranians, and to origin was created by the Son, the first and the highest of the creatures called into being by his power. The Orthodox. The Orthodox. The third party in the council were the Orthodox, who constituted a great majority. All Christians were the worshippers of a Christ. He was to them the object of supreme love and the ground of their confidence and they were subject in heart and life they looked to him for everything he was the good God in the highest sense of the word he was moreover in their apprehension a distinct person and not merely another name for the father 
But as the conviction was no less deeply rooted in the minds of Christians that there is only one God or divine being, the problem which the council had to solve was to harmonize these apparently incompatible convictions, namely that there is only one God, and yet that the Father is God and the Son as a distinct person is God, the same in substance and equal in power and glory. The only thing to be done was to preserve the essential elements of the doctrine and yet not make the statement of itself contradictory. To meet these conditions, the council framed the following creed, namely, we believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, only begotten, begotten of the Father, that is, of the essence of the Father, of God, light, very God, very God begotten, not made, co-substantial with the Father, by whom all things were made, whether in heaven or on earth, who for us, Men, our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate, became man, suffered, rose again on the third day, and ascended into heaven, and will come to judge the living and the dead, and we believe in the Holy Ghost. But those who say that there was a time when he, son, was not, that he was not before he was made, or was made out of nothing, or of another different essence or substance, that he was a creature, or mutable, or susceptible of change, the Holy Catholic Church anathemizes. The most obvious, the Council of Constantinople, the most obvious deficiency in the Nicene Creed is the omission of any definite statement concerning the Holy Spirit. This is to be accounted for by the fact that the doctrine concerning the Son This, however, was disputed. It was distinctly asserted in several provincial councils, as in that of Alexandria, A.D. 362, and that of Rome, A.D. 375. It was an opposition to the doctrine which led to the calling of the Second Ecumenical Council, which met in Constantinople in 381. In modification of the Nicene Creed, as issued by the council, the following words were added to the clause, We believe in the Holy Ghost namely, who is the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, is brought by the prophets. Some of the Greek and the great body of the Latin fathers held that the Spirit proceeded from the Son as well as from the Father, and by the Synod of Toledo in A.D. 589, the words Philoke were added to the Creed. This addition was one of the causes which led to the separation of the Eastern and Western churches. were decided, the so-called Athanasius Creed, and amplified of those Nicaea of Constantinople, came to be generally adopted, at least among the Western churches. That creed was in these words, namely, whoever would be saved must first of all take care that he hold the Catholic faith, which except a man preserve whole and inviolate, inviolate, he shall without doubt perish eternally. But this is the Catholic faith, that we worship one God in Trinity, and Trinity in Unity neither confounded the persons nor divided the substance, for the persons of the Father is one of the Son, another of the Holy Spirit, another. But the divinity of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is one, the glory equal, the majestic, majesty equal, such is the Father, such is also the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father is uncreated, the Son is uncreated, the Holy Spirit is uncreated, the Father is infinite, the Son is infinite, the Holy Spirit is infinite. The Father is is eternal, the Son is eternal, the Spirit is eternal, and yet there are not three eternal beings, but one eternal being, as also there are not three uncreated beings, nor three infinite beings, but one uncreated and one infinite being. In like manner, the Father is omnipotent, the Son is omnipotent, the Holy Spirit is omnipotent, and yet there are not three omnipotent beings, but one omnipotent being. Thus the Father is God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, God, and yet there are not three gods, but one God only. The Father is the Lord, the Son, Lord, and the Holy Spirit, Lord. And yet there are not three laws, but one Lord only. For as we are compelled by Christian truth to confess each person distinctively to be both God and Lord, we are prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or three lords. The Father is made none, nor created, nor begotten. 
The Son is from the Father alone, not made, not created, but begotten. The Holy Spirit is not created by the Father and the Son, nor begotten, but proceeds. Therefore, there is one Father, not three fathers. One Son, not three sons. One Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And this Trinity, there is nothing prior to or post 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 Raya, nothing greater or less, but all three persons are concerned, quite equal to themselves. So that all that through all, as we said above, both unity and trinity and trinity and unity is to be adored. Whoever would be saved, let him thus think concerning the trinity. End of quote. It is universally agreed that Athanasius was not the author of this creed. It appears only in the Latin language and its original form, and it has modes of expression borrowed from the writings of Augustine Vincent of Lorenz in 434 AD, as it also contains allusions to subsequent controversies concerning the person of Christ. It is naturally referred to some period between the mid middle of the 5th and the middle of the 6th centuries, although not issued with authority of any council, it was fundamental article of the Christian faith. There is no difference except as to amplify between the, these several formulas. Now, um, what I'm going to do now is there's a lot of history here. Um, it goes into Calvin's understanding of the doctrine of the Trinity and um, So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on from Charles Hodge and we're going to, basically what we've done here is just looked at the, the history of theology, the last four videos is, has been really a, a, a sort of brief. theologian um, with the scriptural references with the scriptural references concerning that okay so that's the next video coming now